This is Wishup, and this is kind of a bonus reading for the current Cancer New Moon period. Um, I did this little geomancy spread for myself, uh, kind of as an experiment yesterday, and I really liked it, and I liked the messages which came forward, which is kind of my um, result with geomancy. I find it, it comes out uh, with some surprising and specific things to say. So let me talk you through how I did this. You can see if it has anything interesting to say to you. Um, one of the things I'm going to be talking about is a kind of Cinderella syndrome, but I, I hope in a way that you don't commonly think of it or may not commonly hear it discussed that could provide, um, I don't know, food for thought, I suppose. Uh, anyway, what uh, we will do after I uh, talk through the cards is I do have a little bonus um, tarot card from the Klimt Golden Tarot uh, by Los Garabeo. Uh, this I haven't seen yet, so this will be fun for all of us, maybe. <laughs> we'll see what we get. Okay, so the first thing I did was I rolled dice, which is a way you can work with geomancy. I will put a link to my a DIY geomancy series in case you want to play with geomancy yourself. I have a set of videos explaining how you derive the glyphs and different ways you can use it. So what I did was I rolled the dice and I got the five, four, one, and four as sort of lined up in that in that order, like top to bottom, you could say. Um, so five is odd, four is even, one is odd, four is even. So I pulled the card which was odd, even, odd, even. We go again, head, heart, belly, feet, right? So the first card I get is Amicio, which is Venus in green earth. So Venus in earth is Taurus, which happens to be the second house actually. Um, and Amicio means loss. But like the mice in Lenormand, which I also think of as a second house card, it can just deal with the issues of stuff. Stuff is perishable, right? So um, stuff undergoes changes. So money gets spent, it comes and it goes. Um, you can have health challenges, you can have recoveries. Um, everything you own, you have to take care of or it breaks and you have to replace it. So Amicio deals with a lot of the tangible things um, of this world. Uh, second house issues, second house it, uh, being the house of riches, so to speak. So then the next thing I did was I added up all these dice and that gave me 14, which I actually summed down to five, which is Fortuna Minor. And actually, if I'd left it at 14, I would have had populous, um, but this actually ties in quite well with, with what I was doing anyway. So I wanted to sum it down to the smallest amount. Um, and part of the reason I did that is if I had gotten all sixes, for example, um, you know, I'd have a, a number much higher than I could deal with. So anyway, I summed it down to five. Um, and then I took these and I added them together. So odd, odd, you know, one and one on the headline makes two. So this is two. Two and one makes three. So that's odd. So there's odd. One and two makes three. So that's odd. Two and two on the feet line makes two, which is even, right? So it's changing the camera a little bit. So this adds up to the sign conjunctio. So anyway, I'm going to move right past that because for any of you who are not very interested in geomancy, you're kind of like, yeah, but what does it mean? So this, as I said, is Taurus. This is the sun in air, which is actually Leo. But instead of being Leo like kingship that you've earned over a long period of time, what this is, is a stroke of luck, and you can see it like a magic wand. Um, conjunctio, C 
is Mercury in Earth, which is Venus. I'm sorry, not Venus, Virgo. So it has to do with issues of bringing things together in a healthy new combination. Conjunctio can also deal with crossroads issues, needing to make decisions. Um, what kind of partnerships do you want to be a part of? That kind of thing. So where I saw this, when I saw this wand, I do always think of this as the fairy godmother's wand. I think of it as the stroke of luck. It's coming from somewhere else. And in fact, it can come from people you know, like populace. So let's say you're in a situation where you've had some loss or some challenges of a tangible sort. Uh, financial, physical, with your property, with um, items that you need that are broken. Um, this is also a house with Venus in, in uh, Earth of luxury. So maybe you haven't been able to have the luxuries that you wanted. It's also a house of value. So maybe you haven't felt that value coming from the outside world, that recognition of your value. So what happens is you get this stroke of luck from the outside and it values you. So if we think about Cinderella, right? She was in a position where uh, after her father passed away, the stepsisters and stepmother treated her like a servant. They didn't recognize her value as a member of the family. And as a result, um, they didn't recognize the work she did was being done out of um, obligation and affection uh, for her father's memory and even affection for those lousy people. Um, but instead, they didn't recognize her and she ended up having great loss. So the fairy godmother comes in and says, great, let me dress you up and give you the pumpkin coach and all that stuff and send you to the ball. Well, the Cinderella syndrome on one side, on this side, the yin or uh, receptive side can feel like I'm a fraud. These aren't my clothes. This isn't my pumpkin coach. These mice turned into footmen aren't my footmen. And this isn't going to last. You know, this Taurian energy can, can be all about things lasting. And it says this stroke of luck is not going to last. And I'm going to be back where I was or even worse. And uh, in that sense, it can fail to take advantage of this good fortune. Because the idea of the fairy godmother was not to merely give Cinderella the coach, the clothes, and the footmen. The idea was to help her transform her life by recognizing her, recognizing her as the person she really was inside, which is a person who is wise and graceful and charming, and a person who would be welcomed into the prince's family and welcomed by the kingdom. So what the fairy godmother was doing was showing her a vision of herself that she no longer saw. So it's not a lie. It is an embellishment. And what we do for everybody in the Cinderella sort of story is we can for each other be that fairy godmother who sees another person in their best light, in the light of their true potential. And if temporarily we can get them to see it too, they can parlay this minor fortune into a transformation. Because what happens is, of course, she uh, joins up with the prince. She didn't, uh, well, I don't see it so much as she won the prince. I think he wins her too. Um, but also there's a union, there's a transformation. So we're not stuck in this sense of loss and grief with dirt on our faces by a dirty fireplace anymore. We're now in this new healthy union with a new path going forward in life. So another way I want to talk about the Cinderella syndrome is from the prince's standpoint, which is that the prince was getting married for obligation. It's time to have a princess. Um, and that might have seemed like a duty. But when Cinderella shows up at the ball, he's presented with an option that's more than 
obligation. It's more than a transaction. It's a chance to have his heart's desires met too. And when he goes looking for her after she runs away, he is presented with a number of counterfeit options. You know, people pretending that they fit the slipper, but they don't. And he has to stay true to his conception that, no, this isn't the right person. I don't think this is the right person. Um, because he is playing the uh, yang, the, the active principle in this story, right? So he is seeking, seeking, seeking this authentic thing. And she's hiding by the fireplace at home. So what I see here is if we're undergoing changes in our lives, and we're getting the divine boosts, which I was talking about in the last video, that these divine boosts are coming. The idea is not to look at the divine boost as an end in itself. The divine boost is a temporary opportunity to see yourself in a new way and to carry it forward into something transformed. And the idea is if this stroke of luck is being provided by people around you and maybe they're talking you up to a future employer or to a group of people or to a potential partner, don't correct them and say, that's not me, that's not who I am, I'm not that. Go with it. Try on the dress. <laughs> Walk around in it. See how it suits you. See if that change in perspective offers you a new path that you're interested in taking, something healthy, something um, stable for the long term. This is earth, which is stable, and the future is earth, which is stable. If you're a little bit temporarily imaginative, it's not actually irresponsible in this case, but you have to be able to see yourself in your new best way. And whether or not you're serving as someone's fairy godmother or you're serving as Cinderella, or perhaps you're the prince and you are looking for something that feels real and it feels like it's hiding from you, like it won't come out into the light. Um, in any of these cases, the stroke of luck, hopefully, will help bring that forward in a way that you can incorporate this new knowledge, this new perspective into your life going forward. So I hope that kind of makes sense. We'll see. But let me uh, flip this tarot card and let's see what we've got. Oh, this is nice. We've got four of wands, which for me is always a homecoming card. This is a four. And you can see this really ties in with this cancer energy of home and mothering and nurturing and security. And there is definitely a desire here to have emotional security but the way to get the long-term emotional security is to be willing to risk a little. You have to be willing to take a risk, not a huge risk. You're not uh, gambling away everything in your future. But when a, a light, fun, interesting social risk comes along, this might be that Fortuna Minor opportunity. So let's say you get invited to a really great party and you think these people don't know who I am. They aren't going to want to meet me. And, you know, as soon as my friend who's on the VIP list, you know, goes back wherever they are, I'm never going to get to go to this party again. Well, okay, but maybe you go to the party and you meet some interesting people. You have some interesting conversations. You come up with some cool ideas so that even when this fairy godmother's spell times out your transformation doesn't. The way that you can transform your life from a uh, minor good deed or a minor stroke of luck can be very profound if you let yourself get off the subject of what you don't have and what you aren't set up for and the things that you don't know how to do and get into the truth that your fairy godmother has of the best of you, of your bright future, of all the things that you're capable of doing and let yourself just for a night go to the ball and see yourself in that light so that you're not a fraud. You don't feel like an imposter. You don't feel like you borrowed somebody else's clothes. 
you feel like you're coming into your own. So that's it.